Good morning and welcome you all to this lecture session of the course laws on thermodynamics, laws of thermodynamics. Earlier class we discussed the application of first law to an open system or a control volume and we derived the equation in general form when the control volume is at unsteady state and from there the special case for a steady state control volume and the equation is referred to as steady flow energy equation. In this class we will solve some problems which are the applications of the energy equation that means the energy equation applied to a control volume an open system. So, let us first start with the first problem, problem 1 which states that two air flows are combined to a single flow. One flow is 1 meter cube per second that is the volume flow rate at 20 degree Celsius and the other is 2 meter cube per second at 200 degree Celsius. The degree is not, it is omitted inadvertent mistake, but both at 100 kilo Pascals. They mix without any heat transfer to produce an exit flow at 100 kilo Pascals. Neglect kinetic energies and find the exit temperature and volume flow rate. So, problem is like this. two flows are combined to a single flow. This is a pipeline, this is one flow, this is another flow coming and this is going out. One flow is coming here, this is one flow, this is another flow coming through this and this is going out. Let us, this is the inlet section of one flow, this is the inlet section of one flow. Let us define a control volume line. this is the control volume and there is no heat transfer with the surrounding of this pipeline. That means, the entire pipeline is insulated. That means, no heat transfer, no heat transfer. That means, delta Q is 0 or Q is 0. Now, let this section is designated by 1, let this section where this section of the surface of the control volume where this stream cuts is section 2 and this is section 3 combined stream. Now, the quantity given is that P 1 is 100 kilo Pascals. Now, let me see the problem. P 1 is 100 kilo Pascals and T 1 is 293. T 1 is 220 degree Celsius it is given T 1 is 293 K and the volume flow rate Q 1 dot is 1 meter cube per second. For the section 2 P 2 is also 100 kilo Pascals. T 2 is 200 degree Celsius that means 473 K and Q 2 dot equals to that is the volume flow rate 2 meter cube per second. Now, at 3 the condition let us consider the M 3. Now, sorry M 3 no Q 3 dot is unknown is not known not known. We have to find out this. We have to find out the volume flow rate and the temperature the exit temperature, but exit pressure is same because both the pressures at the inlet is same. So, there is an isobaric mixing at the same pressure, but exit temperature is not known it is to be found out. So, what you will do? You will just apply the first law of thermodynamics to this. Now, if we consider this m 1 dot as the mass flow rate at inlet and m 2 dot as the another inflow mass stream, then this is equal to m 3 dot. Now, m 1 dot can again be written as q 1 dot by specific volume at inlet. Similarly, m 2 dot can be written as specific the flow rate divided by specific volume at the inlet 2. Now, the specific volume can be found out from the condition of P 1 T 1. 
how can I write? You know that the relation P V is equal to R T for any ideal gas, for any ideal gas, okay? where P is the pressure, V is the specific volume, R is the characteristic gas, gas constant and T is the temperature. Okay? So, therefore, we can find out from here V 1 is R T 1 by P 1. We know T 1 to 93 K, we know P 1 100 kilo Pascals and we have to substitute the value of R in the corresponding unit. If you put it in kilo Pascals, so R will be in kilo joule per kg K and for air the value of R is 0 0.287 kilo joule, usually you have to remember this per kg K. This is the value of kilo joule per kg K. So, if you put R this T 1 you know and P 1 you know you find out V 1 and in the similar way you find out V 2 by R T 2 P 2 and where T 2 is 473 and P 2 is same 100 kilo Pascals and you can find out V 2. So, therefore, if you find out V 1 and V 2 you can find out m 1 and m, m 1 dot and m 2 dot. So, therefore, you can find out m 1 dot and m 2 dot and you can find out the mass flow rate at the section 3, this is found out. I am not solving the problem in details, but you have to solve it. I will give you the answer after what, but I am giving you the answer now. m 1 dot will come out to be 1 point m 1 dot will come out to be 1 point m 1 dot is coming out to be 1.4733, kg per second, m 2 dot will come out to be m 1 dot is sorry 1.1892, 1.1892 and m 1 m 2 dot is 1.4733. 1.4733 kg per second, 1.47. There may be little variations because they have taken the uh, volume, uh, the specific volume from the air table. No, they have found out by R T 1 P 1. So, you will get this exact value m 1 dot and m 2 dot, you get the value of m 3 dot. Now, to find out the temperature, because you cannot find out the q 2 dot until or q 3 dot until and unless you know the temperature. So, m 3 dot is known now. Now, m 1 dot m 2 dot m 3 dot m 1 dot m 2 dot m 3 dot are known. Now, you have to find out the temperature T 3. Now, you write the energy equation, steady flow energy equation. This is a steady flow and therefore, there is nothing is changing within the control volume. So, therefore, we can write m 1 dot h 1 neglect kinetic energies, it has been told in the problem and potential energy also always neglected, this is not to be told, you always neglect. So, that becomes the energy inflow and that equal to the energy outflow and here energy receiving and going, receiving by the control volume and leaving the control volume is only in terms of the mass flow rate, because there is no work and heat interactions, work interaction is 0. In this case, there is no work interaction and it has been told that the entire thing is insulated, there is no heat transfer to the surrounding. So, therefore, even if the temperature is greater than the surrounding, it may be or may not be, I do not know, but we do not put our brain into that because it is told there is no heat interaction. So, therefore, this will be the specific form of the energy equations. You may not have to remember that, you can just simply by your fundamental principle, you can write this is the energy coming in with the m 1 dot neglecting the kinetic and potential energy, this is with m 2 dot and this is going out and steady flow case, this has to be same. So, therefore, now we can write for an ideal gas, this you have to use, H is given by C p into T, that is C p is the specific heat at constant pressure and T is the absolute temperature. So, if you write this, then you can write m 1 dot C p T 1 plus m 2 dot C p T 2 is equal to m 3 dot is m 1 dot plus m 2 dot C p T 3. 
and for an ideal gas C p is constant and it is not also varying with temperature. So, therefore, C p C p will cancel out. So, it does not matter whether C p values we do not we know or not. So, simply T 3 is found out to be m 1 T 1 plus m 2 T 2 divided by m 1 plus m 2. And you know m 1 dot, you know m 2 dot and you know T 1 T 2, you can find out the value of T 3. When you find out the value of T 3, you can find out the value of V 3 as R T 3 by P 3. T 3 is 100 kilo Pascals. R is the same 0.287 kilojoule per kg. Then when you know T 3 from this energy equation, then you can find out the value of V 3 and you can find out Q 3 dot is a sorry M 3 dot M 3 dot is Q 3 dot by V 3 Q 3 dot by V 3. Okay. So, this is the first problem. Okay. Now, we come to the second problem. Now, we come to the second problem. No. A 25 liter tank that is initially evacuated is connected by a valve to an air supply line following flowing air at 20 degree Celsius 800 kilo Pascal. The valve is open until air flows into the tank and the air flows into the tank until the pressure reaches 600 kilo Pascals. Determine the final temperature and mass inside the tank assuming the process is adiabatic develop an expression for the relation between the line temperature and the final temperature using constant specific heats. Try to understand the problem, there is an initially evacuated tank connected by a valve to an air supply line and air is supplied at 20 degree Celsius and 800 kilo Pascals. The valve is open, air flows until the pressure reaches 600 kilo Pascals when the valve is closed determine the final temperature and mass inside the tank assuming the process is adiabatic. Now, develop an expression for the relation between the line temperature and the final temperature using constant specific heats. Now, this problem is also very interesting problem. Now, let us see the problem what the problem tells. This problem tells that there is a line which connects to a tank, which connects to a closed tank. This is tank and the tank is insulated, it is adiabatic condition. There is no heat transfer from the tank. This air is flowing for example, in this way. There is a valve. Now, first the valve is open, so that the air goes into the tank. We take a control volume like this. Surrounding the tank and cuts the control surface here where the mass coming in. Now, try to understand problem physically. The, there is a line where the air flows and the line pressure is what? The line pressure is line pressure is our evacuated tank line the following line flowing air at 20 degree Celsius 800 kilo Pascals. That means, if this is the condition I in the line T i is equal to 800 kilo Pascals, 800 kilo Pascals, kilo Pascals and T i is equal to 20 degree valve to an air supply line following air 20 degree means 293 k. This is the condition. Okay. So, now, this air goes into this, the tank is initially evacuated, there is nothing in it, no air at all. So, air comes into the tank and its pressure and temperature increases, pressure and temperature increases, there is no heat flow because of the mass introduction 
both pressure and temperature increases. This is the physical problem. Let us consider the tank state, initial state is 1, it goes to the final state 2. Now, initial state 1, final state 2. So, final state is given P2, initially it is evacuated. So, everything is 0. So, final state is P2 600 kilo Pascal and we have to find out what is T2. Develop an expression for the relation between the line temperature and the final temperature using constant specificity. This is a very interesting problem. This is known as charging a tank at an adiabatic condition. Now, here if you draw a control volume like this, now this is an unsteady problem because there is an inflow, there is no outflow and the mass in the tank is changing. Okay. So, if I write this way mass and energy everything is changing, temperature is changing. If I write the continuity equation, you do not have to recall any equation, unsteady, equa unsteady term, equa the flow, unsteady flow energy equation and all these things. You just simply see that if you write the energy equation now and if we consider that in a finite time, the mass which has coming, which has come in to this is m i. This must be equal to m 2 minus m 1. That means, if I integrate simply that earlier equation d m c v d t is d m o d t is simply the integration minus d m i d t. If you integrate it with d t over a time d t, then simply it is del m c v that is the change in the mass of this is del m o that means, the mass which has sorry it is i not in it is i, it is o, the mass which has come in minus mass which has gone out. Simply this is integrated and it comes like this. So, therefore, you do not have to remember any equation and integrate it is simply by your principle of conservation of mass continuity that if over that time when this valve is stopped, when the P2 600 kilo Pascal has reached, then I consider m i amount of mass has crossed or has come from the line to the tank and that must be equal to m 2 that is the final mass minus m 1 and m 1 is 0 evacuated time. So, therefore, m i is equal to final mass. Now, if you recall or you do not have to recall, if you recall you will get the same thing that the change in the internal energy within the control volume that means, E C V 2 minus E C V 1. That means, we integrate the del E C V del T terms. That means, E C V 2 minus E C V 1 is exactly equal to what there is no heat work interactions that will be equal to the inflow energy with this mass. That means, it is by that finite time M i into H i simply M i into H i. That means, this is the change of energy in the control volume. It is equal to the mass which has entered into the control volume across this section and its energy is H i because we neglect kinetic energy and potential energy. So, only energy is U plus P v that is enthalpy, enthalpy at the condition line condition H i. This E C V 2 is what? M 2 into E 2 and this E C V is 0 specific energy. This is 0 m 1 is 0, there is no mass. So, there is no energy. So, this is, is equal to m i h i. Now, this E 2 that is the energy contained in the tank is only in the form of intermolecular energy because there is no motion, this is a closed tank or even if there is some motion we just neglect motion of the gas. So, therefore, the energy contained in the control volume is only in the form of intermolecular energy. That means, we can write as m 2 u 2 is m i h i. Since m 2 and m i is same, u 2 is h i. That means, u 2 is h i. Now, for any perfect gas, I told earlier that h is C p into t. Similarly, u is C v into t, where C p is the specific heat at constant pressure and u is the specific heat at constant volume. So, therefore, for any ideal gas h can be expressed as C p into t and u can be expressed as C v into t. 
this comes from the genesis which may be beyond the scope of your course here that enthalpy and internal energy of an ideal gas is a function of temperature only okay is a function of temperature only and specific heats are constant over the range of temperature and therefore we can write h is cpt and u is cvt this you just take it at the present moment for any ideal gas we can express enthalpy and internal energy is like that now this u2 is hi therefore we can write cv t2 is cpti so therefore t2 becomes is equal to cp by cv into ti so this is the general expression so this is the general expression that the final temperature will be always the ratio of specific heats times the line temperature so therefore with the numerical data you can solve the problem that's why a part of the problem is developed so t2 is cp so simply you multiply 8293 with the ratio cp by cv for air it is 1.4 so t2 will be 1.4 times the 293 this is the answer so this is the expression t2 is cp by cv into ti okay now we will come to the next problem now we will write the next problem go to the next problem see the next problem a nitrogen line at 300 k and 0.5 mega pascal is connected to a turbine that exhausts to a closed initially empty tank of 50 meter cube okay the turbine operates to a tank pressure of 0.5 mega pascals at which point the temperature is 250 k okay assuming the entire process is adiabatic determine the turbine work so a nitrogen is connected to a turbine line turbine exhaust to a tank and ultimately it stops when the tank reaches the 0.5 mega pascals and the temperature is 250 k assuming the entire process is adiabatic determine the turbine work let us come to this problem this problem is like this come to the board for this problem the problem is like this a very simple problem only a turbine is there it is same as the earlier one this is the line and now this exhaust to a tank the only difference is that here the turbine develops an work w the shaft is rotating this is the turbine turbine this is the line which we denote at i the tank which is initially evacuated however we take the initial state at 2 and final state at initial state at 1 final state at 2 here according to the problem let me see what are the values pi ti given so pi is now 0.5 mega pascals pi is 0.5 mega pascals what is ti given the line temperature 300k 300k is connected now the tank is closely initially empty empty tank of 50 meter cube that means tank volume is 50 meter cube that is the volume of the tank always i write volume as v cut to differentiate it from the velocity v now the final pressure of the tank is 0.5 mega pascals and final temperature of the tank is t2 is what final temperature of the tank 250k so you have to find out the turbine work and the entire system is adiabatic entire system is adiabatic now we take a control volume like this surrounding this 
in circumscribing or enveloping this entire system control volume like this, where a part of the control surface cuts this inflow line, where, where it enters to the turbine that is the line of nitrogen and it comes to the tank. It is also an unsteady problem because there is only one inflow to the tank, but there is no outflow and at the same time the temperature and pre temperature pressure mass everything changes in the tank. So, here also it is a steady flow energy equation and the same mass flows to the turbine and the tank and we consider that the mass which has been introduced during the operation of the turbine when the tank reaches this condition is m. Then we write the energy equation, energy equation is what this m 2 e 2 that means the energy in the tank that is the control volume at 2 minus energy in the tank at the initial state that is the change in the energy in the control volume. But here you can ask me a question a very interesting and this is the concept of the problem. Everything is routine, this is the concept that the control volume consists of both turbine and the tank, but I am considering the mass and the internal energy of the tank. This is because the turbine is operating at a steady state that is the clue of the problem. That means, it is so that during the operations the turbine operates and ultimately at some point it stops. During its operation the internal energy within the turbine does not change. So, therefore, if you take also as a part of the control volume both tank and the turbine. So, change in the internal energy of the turbine is 0. So, therefore, in with regard to the change in internal energy of the control volume it is the internal energy change in the tank only and that is equal to what it has come that is the mass. So, this mass is nothing but the m 2 m 1 is 0 the same mass m 2 has come from the line and it is h i that means you see here only difference that this is the mass change in the internal energy control volume is equal to the energy which is as received and another thing will come what is that what is the difference between the earlier one here work is done. So, work is done out by this control volume that means minus w that means the control volume has received this energy that is the energy inflow with the mass m 2 and the enthalpy of the line h i minus the work done equals to the change in the internal energy of the control volume. Okay, this m 2 and this m 2 is same because m 1 is 0 final m 2 is m 2 that means, the change in the mass is m 2 change in the mass of the control volume is m 2 and this m 2 has come from that under steady state through the turbine. So, therefore, this m 2 has carried an inflow energy m 2 into h i we neglect the kinetic and potential energies minus the work done work developed by the turbine. So, that is the only difference that what. So, therefore, here you know the m 2, how to know the m 2? You know p 2, you know t 2. Okay. So, you can find out the specific volume or you can find out this way that p v is equal to r t. This you tell that m r t. Now, p 2 v tank that is the v 2 is equal to m 2 r t 2. So, you know t 2, you know r, here nitrogen is there. So, r for nitrogen is 28. So, you know v tank 50 meter cube, you know p 2 t 2 you find out m 2. So, when you find out m 2 then e 2 is what again I write this equation m 2 sorry m 2 u 2 is equal to m 2 h i minus w. So, u 2 is m 2 c v t 2 is equal to m 2 c p t 1 I told c p t i h is c p t and u is c v t minus w. Here you know everything if you know the value of c p and c v you know t 2 and t i also. So, therefore, you can find out what you can find out the work, okay. you can find out the work output. So, you know m 2, 
you know T 2 and T 1, you can find out the work output. Now, C P C B values are like this, C P is equal to for nitrogen 1.04, 1.04 kilo joule per kg k, you take this value and C B is equal to some point 0.785 kilo joule per kg k and you get the work output. The answer is like this, they have taken the values of this u and h from the table. So, there will be little bit of difference, the value will be the final answer will be final answer will be w is equal to the final answer will be 41.004 mega joule, you will get something close to that 41.04 mega joule that is the answer. So, therefore, you understand how you can apply the you do not have to recall any unsteady flow energy equation just simply you apply your brain the conservation of energy how you can write. The difference with the earlier problem is that that work is developed by the. So, therefore, the amount received with the inflow energy minus the work developed accounts for the energy change in the control volume and initially it is evacuated. So, this part is 0. So, M 2 and by continuity or conservation of mass the amount of mass which has come to the control volume during the operation is equal to the mass which is flowing to the line. So, line mass flow is same this is the amount of mass enters the control volume. So, finally, we get with this application of this equation and the concept that H is C P T and E is C V T we get the value of W everything is given only the work output has to be found out. Okay, today up to this thank you.